What's up guys, Super Saf here, and welcome to the Super Saf style camera comparison between the iPhone 16 Pro Max and the Google Pixel 9 Pro XL. I've had so, so many requests for this one. We're gonna be looking at all aspects of the cameras. There will be chapters down below. Let's get to it. So let's kick off with some photos from the primary cameras. Now, after taking hundreds of images from both devices, both take excellent images with great detail and dynamic range. One thing you'll notice is that Google has that pixel style. It's quite high in contrast. Whereas the iPhone generally goes for more of a neutral look, but we do have the next generation of photographic styles with the iPhone. So you can actually dial in a look that you'd like and take photos with that look. You can also go back in and change this. Yes, you do have the ability to edit images from the pixel after the fact too, but it's not at the same level. Now, one advantage that the iPhone does get is that it shoots by default at 24 megapixels in good light from the primary camera. The pixel shoots at 12. So if we go in 100% to both of these images, you'll see that you will be able to get a lot more detail on the iPhone in good light and you can read the text here, whereas it is a bit of a struggle on the pixel. Now, of course, both of these can shoot at the full resolutions, 50 megapixels for the pixel and 48 megapixels for the iPhone. And when we do this, both actually do really good. Going in 100%, I would say that the iPhone is sharper. Now, low light from the primary cameras. Both do well generally. The iPhone in this image is a little bit brighter. This image looks close at first glance, but if we look towards the sky, there is a lot more noise on the Pixel image versus that of the iPhone. And once again, in this image, you can see a lot more noise on the Pixel versus the iPhone, which is a lot cleaner. Now, the Pixel has maintained the night look of this picture, whereas the iPhone has brightened things up. It almost looks like it's dawn, although this was taken around 10, 11 p.m but I still prefer the cleaner image from the iPhone. Now in this image, neither are doing great. The pixel is pretty dark in the foreground. The iPhone is brighter in the foreground, but it's very, very soft in that foreground area. But if you focus on the bricks, the iPhone has maintained those better compared to the pixel. And an indoor low light image, this is in a very, very dark situation. The iPhone doing much better here compared to the Pixel. So for the primary camera, I did find myself leaning more towards the iPhone than the Pixel overall. Now, one thing that a lot of people keep asking me about in these camera comparisons is to use the astrophotography mode. I generally don't use this because I am in the UK where it's usually always cloudy. We don't have clear skies, but we did have somewhat of a clear sky, so I thought, Okay, I'm gonna have to go and test this. Otherwise, people are just gonna be in my case. And these are the results. Now, with the Pixel, it took around four minutes to get this shot. On the iPhone, you can do a maximum of 30 seconds. Both of these were on a tripod. And yes, you can probably see a few more stars on the Pixel's image, but that took around eight times longer to achieve. So for me, this is just not very practical. If you are somebody that's very much into astrophotography and you can do a better job than me, then you might prefer the Pixel for this particular instance. Quick reminder, if you're enjoying this video so far and you wanna see more super SAF style camera comparisons, then do consider subscribing and hit that bell icon. I've been doing camera comparisons for around 10 years now. And God willing, inshallah, I'll carry on doing them so you don't wanna miss them. Now for the ultra wide cameras, both do really well, generally speaking. You've got lots of detail and dynamic range. However, I did find that the Pixel is wider, quite a bit wider compared to the iPhone, which you might like. In this image, I do prefer the iPhone. I think it's got more detail in the shadow areas. But in this image, look how much more detail the Pixel has in the shadow areas compared to the iPhone. Now sure, when you are taking the image, you can tweak the exposure on both of these if you wanted to get a silhouette, but as standard, I do prefer what comes out of the Pixel here. Both ultra wide cameras have autofocus, which means you can take macro images, and I think both take excellent macro images. That higher contrast look of the Pixel does work well in situations like this. But in this example, the iPhone has better maintained the blacks in this Prayer Mac compared to what we've got on the Pixel. The Pixel has kind of introduced a bit of a blue. And I noticed this quite a bit with the Pixel when it comes to colors, it tries to give you a bit more of a balanced tone rather than what's actually there. Here you can clearly see that the sun is shining on this figure and the iPhone has maintained the yellow from the sunlight, whereas the Pixel has gone for something that's white balanced and is in the middle and has a bit of blue to it. Now for the ultra wide cameras in low light, I would say it was very close. Both do have a lot of noise in this image. And in this image, although the Pixel is sharper, it's got more noise compared to the iPhone. 
So for the ultra wide camera, I would say that you're getting better dynamic range and a wider angle of view from the Pixel, but the iPhone, you are getting more accurate colors. Now let's look at the zoom. So both of these do have a five times optical zoom camera. However, both can digitally zoom in between as well. This is at 2X, I would say both are very similar. Now, when we go to 5X, this is where the optical zoom cameras kick in. And at this resolution, things are quite close. So I thought let's extend it to around 10 times. One thing you will notice is that there is a slight difference in focal length, even though both are 10 times. And again, things look close, but when we go to 25 times, then I would say that the Pixel is a tad sharper compared to the iPhone. I'm particularly looking at the text and how readable it is on the Pixel versus the iPhone. Now the Pixel can go up to 30 times and it also has something called Zoom Enhance, which is gonna use AI to sharpen up the image. Now, when we have this, yes, it can look a little bit artificial, but it does make the text clearer. In this example, once again, you can see that the Pixel is sharper, but when we add Zoom Enhance, it just adds details which may not have even been there. Now, whether you like this or not, and how often you're gonna use it is gonna come down to you, but I have to say that in good light, extended zoom is better on the Pixel in my opinion. This is, however, not the case when it comes to low light. So here, I am doing my traditional low light zoom test, and at five times zoom, you can see that the iPhone is doing so much better here. If we go to 10 times, once again, there is that difference in focal length, but look how much cleaner the text is on the iPhone compared to the Pixel. And going to 25 times, once again, the iPhone is better than the Pixel here. The Pixel is really trying to post-process, but it's not doing as good as the iPhone. So zoom camera in low light, better on the iPhone. Now for portraits. So it's a little bit confusing on the Pixel because when you go into portrait mode, you start at 1.5 and the next step is two. You can scroll and go all the way to three, but there is no option to use the five times telephoto camera for portraits, but we'll get to that. So in this example, we're using the first stop, 1X on the iPhone and we're using 1.5X on the Pixel. Now sure, you may not be taking 1X portraits all the time. I like to have the option there. And in this example, I have to say that the iPhone is doing much better. If you look at the Pixel, it's trying to do uh, that gradual blur, but then it's kind of missed out the bit in between my legs, which is weird. The next step for both is 2X. And here, I think things are pretty close, but I'm personally really interested in 5X portraits. Now, although you don't have the option to take portraits at 5X on the Pixel, you can just take a normal 5X picture and then add portrait blur after the fact. So in this example, what we can do is we can go in and add the portrait blur to this 5X image. And clearly the iPhone is doing way better. If you look at the part between my arms, that has been completely missed by the Pixel. Whereas the iPhone has done an amazing job and whatever depth information they're using is really good because even on the iPhone, you can add depth after the fact to a normal image. The iPhone has also picked up the wisps of my head to make things look a lot more realistic. But if you look at the colors, I would say that the Pixel has more pleasing colors. The iPhone does look pretty flat. And this is something that I found consistently when you're using the standard photographic style on the iPhone for portraits. But as we know, we can go in either before we take the picture or even after we've taken the picture and add a photographic style. I generally prefer amber, which I think works with my skin tones best. And when we put this on, you can see the blacks are a lot more accurate now, so is my skin tone. Now, yes, this is an extra step that you have to take because I have found that you can't just set a particular photographic style for everything. It just doesn't match every single situation. So you do need to kind of go in and tweak things after the fact, but I really do like the impact that it can have on portraits. Here is another portrait at 5X. Now this is a bit more of a simple portrait. So the Pixel was actually doing pretty well here. But once again, look at just how good the iPhone is. Those individual strands of hair that are poking up have all been maintained on the iPhone and it just looks like much more of a realistic portrait compared to the Pixel. So yeah, for portraits, it's an easy pick for me. It's the iPhone. Now let's look at selfies. So the Pixel has what I call the Pixel look. Some people love it, some people don't. I absolutely love it. It makes everything pop and I think it gives you some really nice and sharp looking selfies. You can see in this example here as well that it's giving you a much wider field of view, which I like. 
The iPhone isn't doing bad. It's got really good dynamic range, but it looks a lot flatter compared to the Pixel. You can add photographic styles on selfies as well if you'd like, but I still do prefer the Pixel. Now in this example, I would say that the iPhone is doing better in terms of dynamic range. The Pixel has blown out my window, whereas the iPhone has maintained that detail in the background. But in this example, once again, I prefer the Pixel, the sharper result with the wider angle of view. Now portraits from the selfie cameras, I think actually both do really well. With the iPhone, it kind of punches in when you're doing portraits for some reason. Now you can just take a normal selfie and because of that depth information, turn it into a portrait later on. And in this example, I have added a photographic style to the iPhone's image just to show you an example. Another portrait selfie, I once again prefer the Pixel here. It's done a better job in terms of the edge detection. There's a slight error on the iPhone. Again, generally speaking, I think both take good selfies. It might come down to personal preference. I generally did find myself leaning towards the Pixel when it came to selfies. Low light selfies, this is using that night mode. I generally don't tend to do this because it gives you very soft results. Here, at first glance, the iPhone looks like it's doing better, but it is more noisier compared to the Pixel, but the Pixel has kind of made me a little bit yellow. In this example, the iPhone really struggled to capture me. I think the Pixel has done a better job. Using the front facing flash in low light for selfies, the pixel can be a little bit overpowering like you can see in this example. But in this example, because it was super dark, it actually worked out and it's giving a cleaner image compared to the iPhone. Now, before we move on to video, we have to talk about some of the AI features. With the iPhone, we've got Apple intelligence, but technically we don't have it because it's coming soon. We've seen some previews of what you'll be able to do. There's cleanup, which will take people out of the background. There's image playground and things like that. But when it comes to photo editing specifically, we've had lots of AI features on the Google Pixel already, and we've had them for a few years. So we've got Magic Editor, which not only lets you remove people from the background, you can move people around. You can then use Reimagine to completely reimagine your picture. You can change the background, the scenery, just with a few text prompts. We've still got best take from last year. So if you take a few pictures, you can then actually change the faces of people so you can pick the best pose for each person. And then we've got my new favorite feature on the Pixel and that is Add Me. If you are somebody who's generally the family photographer, you'll know the pain of just being out of pretty much all of the family pictures. Well, that is no longer a problem if you have the Pixel all you can do is just take the image and then pass the phone on to somebody else, jump in, and then the Pixel is gonna use AI to merge those images together. And it generally does a pretty good job. I don't have any friends, so I just had to use Add Me with myself. And you can do that pretty easily, have two versions of yourself in the same image with Add Me. Now let's look at video. Both of these take excellent quality video at 4K with lots of detail and dynamic range. Now, generally, this is an easy win for the iPhone, but the Pixel has video boost. What is video boost? Well, it is Google doing their post-processing magic. You take a video with video boost on, and then it has to upload to the cloud into Google servers. They apply lots of magic to your video and then give it back to you. Now, this process does take a few hours, but the results are very impressive. Generally, the iPhone is king of dynamic range, especially when we're using Dolby Vision with HDR. But when we're using Video Boost on the Pixel, it really does take out the detail in the shadows, as you can see from this example here. You also have a night sight video with the Pixel, which improves low light images. So when we take a nighttime video without any fancy settings on both devices, then I would say that the iPhone gives you a cleaner video. Although we do have those lens flare light balls on both of these. However, when we use night sight video, once again, this is gonna record the video, put it into the cloud. A few hours later, it's gonna give you the result. The Pixel gives you some very impressive low light video too. And the Pixel also has an option for 8K, but it's technically not 8K. It's 4K video, which once again, goes into the cloud for a few hours. It's upscaled by Google and then brought back down to your device. Now looking at this side by side at 100%, yes, it is sharper compared to the iPhone, but it's not true 8K. You can really tell that because when you look towards the text, if it was real 8K, then you'd be able to read that completely fine. But you can see that it has been upscaled from 4K. 
Nevertheless, this option is here. Now, having said that, these video boost features only work with the primary camera. They don't work with the selfie camera. They don't work with the ultra wide camera. So when we do take ultra wide video, especially in low light, I did prefer the iPhone, which was much cleaner. Now, the question is of course going to be, do you have the patience to go through this whole process of a few hours each time you take one of these videos? In the world of instant gratification, where people wanna post things straight away, a lot of people pretty much use their social media apps to record and push things out straight away. If you're one of those people, then you're not gonna have the patience for the video boost features that you've got on the Pixel. However, if you're somebody who wants the best possible quality and doesn't mind that process, then the Pixel does give you some very impressive results. Now, the iPhone does allow you to record in ProRes with Log, so you can record a flat picture profile and then grade it later on. If you're somebody who's a pro videographer, this is something that you're gonna find super useful. And the iPhone also shoots 4K at 120 frames a second with HDR. So when we compare slow motion in my traditional slow motion test on a trampoline with my bad knees, then you can see that the iPhone is giving you a much sharper and cleaner result. Even if we go to 240 frames a second at 1080p, although both are quite similar, I would still give the edge to the iPhone. For stabilization, I would say both are pretty stable, although in this example, the Pixel decided to focus on the background rather than on me. And when we do use the respective stabilization modes on both devices, on the iPhone, you can do it at 2.7K, whereas on the Pixel, it's at 1080p. And the quality is really not good. Look how noisy it is. So for stabilization, once again, I would pick the iPhone. Now, when it comes to cinematic video, you saw the example at the start of this video, and the iPhone can shoot at 4K with cinematic mode with that background blur. The Pixel can only do 1080p, and the iPhone just gives you much sharper and cleaner results. On the iPhone, you can also do cinematic mode from the front-facing camera. You can't do this from the front-facing camera on the Pixel. And the iPhone also lets you adjust the blur after you've taken the video. You can't do this on the Pixel. So when it comes to cinematic video, easy win for the iPhone. Now for the selfie camera, the Pixel is quite a bit wider, but the iPhone is sharper and gives you more detail. I found the Pixel is quite soft. And in terms of stabilization from the front facing camera, I did find that the Pixel was more stable overall. Now for audio, this is very interesting. So the Pixel does have something called speech enhancement. So when you're recording straight off, it is gonna try to enhance your speech. Let's look at an example of both without any fancy modes. All right, this is an audio test with the iPhone 16 Pro Max versus the Google Pixel 9 Pro XL. Got a bit of wind in the background as well. And uh, let's see what the audio sounds like and let's hear what the audio sounds like. Let me know if you prefer the iPhone 16 Pro Max or the Google Pixel 9 Pro XL. Right, now of course, it's the era of AI and we have some AI features on both of these. The Pixel has something called Audio Magic Eraser. So here is an example with the tap running in the background. All right, now audio test with the tap on on the Google Pixel 9 Pro XL and the iPhone 16 Pro Max. All right, now audio test with the tap on, on the Google Pixel 9 Pro XL and the iPhone 16 Pro Max. Now with the iPhone, we have something called Audio Mix. So once you've recorded a video with spatial audio, you can then go in and choose four different styles. You can have standard, you can have in-frame, studio and cinematic. And here are examples of all of these. All right, now audio test with the tap on, on the Google Pixel 9 Pro XL and the iPhone 16 Pro Max. All right, now audio test with the tap on, on the Google Pixel 9 Pro XL and the iPhone 16 Pro Max. All right, now audio test with the tap on, on the Google Pixel 9 Pro XL and the iPhone 16 Pro Max. All right, now audio test with the tap on, on the Google Pixel 9 Pro XL and the iPhone 16 Pro Max. Now I am no audio expert, but I think both did sound pretty good. With the iPhone, although I think it does a better job of canceling out that background noise, it can sound a little artificial in my opinion, 
But once again, I am not an audio file. Have a listen to both of these as many times as you want, and then let me know down in the comments which one you think sounds better. So that is the Super SaaS style camera comparison between the Google Pixel 9 Pro XL and the iPhone 16 Pro Max. So many people were asking me about this. People were like, why haven't you done a Pixel video? And that's because I was waiting for the iPhone to compare it to. I couldn't compare it to the iPhone 15 Pro Max because that video would be out of date very quickly. Now, in terms of my opinions, I think both have excellent overall cameras, as I always say. I think it has come to a point where flagship cameras, you really can't go wrong. Of course, each have their advantages and disadvantages. So you can go back and see each section and I have picked my winner in each section too. But if I was to kind of summarize in one sentence, I would say that out of the box, if you are looking for great images and video, then the iPhone is gonna be your pick. But if you don't mind fixing it in post, quoting Marquez from one of his previous Pixel reviews, then the Pixel is gonna give you lots of flexibility with AI. Things like Reimagine, Add Me, and in particular, Video Boost, which does have a massive impact on the quality of your videos. That's what I think anyway. What do you guys think? Drop me a comment below. Let me know your thoughts. If you wanna see lots of different images from lots of different devices, then do give me a follow on Instagram. I am at SuperSaf. And if you wanna see more SuperSaf style camera comparisons like this, as well as lots of other tech content, then do consider subscribing and hit that bell icon. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it useful. If you did, then do smash that like button for me. Thanks for watching. This is Saf on Super Saf TV. I'll see you next time.